Hey guys, this is Editorial Analysis for September the 16th, 2016. So, let's go to the first one. It is on the Kaveri water issues. It says that the fertile basin of Kaveri has given rise to forests, agriculture and industry, all coexisting in a rather uneasy manner. Earlier, there were dense forests in the basin that used to prevent uh, flash flooding and allow slow percolation and recharge of the tributaries. But later, deforestation across the basin has contributed to reduction in rainfall, increase in soil erosion and flooding, all due to construction, agriculture and plantation of water-hungry water hungry trees like eucalyptus and acacia. So these are the reasons why uh, there is so much of deforestation is happening. So also uh, there is rampant sand mining for construction and it has altered the natural topography of the river eroding its banks, widening the river, widening the river and altering the water flow patterns. These activities have also rendered the wells in the region dry. Farmers out of desperation are lending their land to sand contractors thus becoming complicit in their own destruction. The agriculture in the region is also suffering because of climate change. Now, um, there are many dams across the river that decrease the river's capacity to uh, store water. Also, there is a, a very uh, high uh, amount of siltation in the dams that is in that has increased to alarming levels also polluted water from the industries are flowing into the river only toxic sludge builds on the river bed further reducing its storage capacity so uh, and uh, one more reason there is uh, that is that people in farmers in the kaveri basin they um, cultivate water intensive crops like paddy so what are the suggestions so these are the problems that basically uh, the uh, kaveri river basin faces in the light of the huge um, skirmish going on between karnataka and tamil nadu so what are the suggestions how can we remedy this first of all that we can grow millets there that are not so water intensive or we can introduce multi cropping of vegetables or more water efficient varieties of rice there should be a forestation recharge of the river and uh, we should limit the industrial pollution ban excessive sand mining and construction so these are some of the ways that we can deal with it let's move on to the second editorial it says that india has signed uh, agreements on extradition uh, and uh, and on mutual legal assistance and space cooperation with Afghanistan. Also, India announced a $1 billion in aid to Afghanistan. Also, uh, uh, the, all this happened while uh, Afghanistan's president Ghani visited India recently. Also, while he visited, he sort of bitched about Pakistan's army. And I'm quoting him. He said, uh, quote, every defeat is celebrated as a victory quote end in Pakistan uh, Pakistani army quote purely greedy state quote end and quote unreasonable goals quote end so uh, these are some of the ways he um, sort of defined uh, Pakistan so and earlier he had warned Pakistan that if it uh, continues to disrupt Indo-Afghanistan trade it will block uh, Afghanistan will block Pakistan's access to Central Asia. So that led to a border clash at Tokhan and Chaman between Afghanistan and Pakistan. So this is uh, good news for us diplomatically. Let's move on to the third one. This news is not so good for us diplomatically. What has happened is that uh, you know recently the president of Uzbekistan Karimo died and we sent nobody to mourn his death. It is a very bad move diplomatically because uh, Uzbekistan is a very um, important country in the Central Asia. They border all the Central Asian countries including uh, our friend Afghanistan. Even China also sent an envoy to mourn his death and something like this, things like this countries never forget. So uh, it will reflect in their 
uh, foreign policy towards us in later times and it was a very bad move politically perhaps our political executive was not focusing uh, too much on this so um, they should have so let's move on to the fourth um, editorial <coughs> This says the uh, Dow Chemical, DOW Chemical, and DuPont they have merged. Later, the agrochemical um, company Syngenta was acquired by China National Chemical Corporation. Now, Bayer, is, that is an agrochemical company, has uh, bought Monsanto. Monsanto, that is a seeds and genomics um, company so all these are multinational corporations related to seeds genomics and agricultural um, products now these are huge consolidations and it is not a good news for indian farmers which are already grappling with low prices prices why it is not why is it not good news because once um, they consolidate they they are going to form a sort of a monopoly in the market and they are then going to decide the prices and nobody can uh, uh, small players cannot challenge their hegemony in the market so the prices will increase automatically and the ultimate sufferers for this will be indian uh, uh, poor farmers so um, the author here suggests that like china we should also set up state enterprises in this field to control the prices so this is uh, that's it for today that is september the 16th 2016 bye bye